This is part three of the first time back trading strategy video series and this is the final part as well. So just have a quick recap. I in video one I went through what an FTB is and how to identify a support resistance FTB in terms of what to look for and the same for a supply demand zone FTB and then in the second video I spoke specifically about entries and stops in terms of using uh, the knowledge of decision points which is something I went through in the um, the main supply and demand trading uh, supply and demand videos using that knowledge of decision points to identify entries and tight stop losses tight stop losses relative to um, how most people would look at an FTB type trade okay so this is the last video where we're going to talk about exits exits and also I will look at a few other kind of objective considerations to take into account when analysing the setup. So, <clears throat> looking at exits, um, an FLR FLS first line of resistance, first line of support, it's just a supply demand or support resistance zone that could cause price to reverse. Okay. I'm not in this video going to be talking about running trades, when to look beyond the FLR FLS. It's purely looking at how to identify the FLR FLS and using that as an exit. Okay. Now, when identifying an FLR FLS, we also want to have value in a trade. Okay. When we analyze the trade itself, in terms of when do we want to take it, we want value in terms of the risk reward. Okay. Now, for me, what what is deemed value is generally a risk reward of around one one R. I will take trades that are less than that. I think my bare minimum is around 0.5 R, but that's definitely the exception to the norm. But I would say most of my trades, the setups I look at, are between sort of 0 0.7 and 1.3 R to the FLR FLS. Obviously, some some of my trades I do run beyond there, but for the purpose of this, I'm just talking about merely the FLR FLS. Okay. We also have to consider the strength of the area we're trading from in, ter in terms of if we're trading an M5 FTB relative to a H1 FTB which is also a H4 area and also it has daily time of frame significance. Obviously the latter is a stronger area than the M5 in isolation setup. So that can help us in identifying how much strength we believe believes price should leave that area from and that helps us in terms of looking for a bigger target in terms of finding the FLI FLS than an M5 setup in isolation. Okay. And it's also important like like we did for entries and stops in terms of zooming in to find the decision points. You can do the same thing for exits. I don't do it to the same degree in terms of if I've got a H4 I'm not going to go down to M1. I'm going to find my exit based around the H4 but I will look at H1, M30 for example and also look at the daily time frame just to get as much information about where I think is a suitable FLI FLS okay looking at different time frames gives you more information than the current time frame can potentially give you okay that's the way to look at time frames okay so if I look at just a few examples in terms of exits So we here we have an FTB. It's uh, an SD zone and also has SR history too. Where where am I going to be targeting? Well, if I look down here, I can see we have form of supply up here. We have form of supply within this area here too. So I'm going to be looking somewhere within here you can see the supply within here supply supply you can see it's like a, a resistance point down here so I would be zooming in this is H1 euro yen um, in November 2012 so I'm going to be zooming in a little bit just to find the decision points within here see if I can pinpoint a more um, concise zone than this H1 wide zone okay but somewhere within this is going to be my FLS because this is untested demand following a breakout of this overall area. Okay, so you can see my entry is going to be below here. My stop loss is going to be above a decision point within this within this zone, and then makes it somewhere down here. 
you can see this is going to, even if it's above there, you can see there's above 1R to the FLS here. Even if I use the widest possible stop loss, which is above this zone. Okay, it's obviously not going to be above here or somewhere up here. Okay. This one is S&P, S&P 500. Uh, again, this is H1 time frame, and again, this is in November. This is an SR FTB resistance. You can see resistance, support, support, arc like retest. We're coming back now. When I'm looking at this one, I'm going to be looking along here. You can see resistance. We have an overshoot here, but you can see the build up as resistance here, which it's just a a new demand zone which caused a breakout up here. So this position point at this edge, so you see it's very quite clear and again I'll zoom in a little bit to pinpoint my exit is gonna my exit is gonna be at this decision point as you can see that's what priced it before it reversed and made a new went through this SR. Okay. This one is Euro dollar. This is the M and M15 time frame again. November. These are all November. These examples. Um, we can see here rally base rally. You can't see it on this chart, but this also has an SR history as well. Because based on this alone, it's, it's um, not quite as concise as I'd like it, but it's got SR history, which adds to the confluence. Okay. And again, it's pretty straightforward. This whole area, area here is demand. Price comes up, it breaks it, it consumes the demand within here. We see we have the immediate retest. Then we have a breakout of this whole area, and price shoots lower. Okay, so this on the retrace is going to be untested supply. So this is the first area. This is the FLR. Okay, and again, there's going to be above one R to this. Entry is going to be. A Above here, it stop loss on the, and then 15 zone is more likely to be below the zone low, and you see it actually just reacts right at the decision point at the edge. Last example, this is Euro New Zealand dollar H1. And you can't, there is SR history here, but you can't really see it too well. well you can't, but you can see the supply within here, and you can see price this was demand we came up we based you can see how we broke the below this area you can see that this is a breakout and how price left it the momentum the breakout rush the strong momentum down into the FTB area this is an SR and also an SD zone FTB and this is going to be thus going to be my FLR above here now this is one um, my trader members will remember that we actually targeted higher up to this area um, this is one where we look to go beyond the FLR because because of the compression along here combined with a very strong reaction, i.e. the strong buying. It's, it's got that down, instant reversal, type order flow based FTB, okay, the strong rejection. That said to me it was worth leaving at least some on on the table. At least some of, some of the trading play because of the compre the strong buying combined with this being completely compressed either the supply within here being completely consumed and the next area which was a daily SR and a supply zone up here so you can see you know that can turn into a three to four R winner quite easily but even to the FLR that's a you know that's above our one R winner okay so it's pretty straightforward that's what I'm going to talk about that other considerations now I go over this topic with a bit of um, I'm a bit wary of going over this topic because of my experience of of people that trade FTBs and people I've worked with in the past and other people I see around um, is that generally and generally trade with trading price action if people don't have the confidence they're more likely to find a reason not to take a trade or find a reason to cut a trade if it doesn't go in that direction very quickly. Okay, so the more reasons you give those people, the worse they perform. Okay, whereas a fully confident trader and a fully experienced trader can use these type of considerations in the right way. 
but when you're starting out you're more likely to use them in the wrong way so it's best to start simple and then build things in as you become profitable and as you notice things yourself the more you trade the more you notice little nuances about how price behaves and the certain things that repeat themselves that lead to a, a more likely a trade to be a loser okay so these are some of these characteristics but there's a big caveat attached with them that you should keep things simple and not overly focus too much on these things don't let them affect your judgment okay trading right before news okay this is a very obvious one and a very simple one okay if you've got a major news event and your price and you've got an m5 time frame ftb and price is about to hit it's a few pips away from it what is likely to happen you're going to get increased spreads if you're trading with um, a, a proper broker i.e., not a market maker not a bucket shop you're going to get potential whipsaw you're going to get potential slippage and most important most importantly even if the traders go in your favor you're most likely to get stopped out you're more likely to get stopped out because your stop loss is going to be tight, five, six pips on an M5 time frame, even maybe lower, price is going to move more than that in a major news event. Okay, so you have to look at the time frame you're trading, the stop size versus the news event. Okay, so if I'm trading a daily time frame, I might have a stop loss, say 50 pips, and I've got a retail sales, which isn't the most major of news like NFP is, for example then I might trade against that. I might be happy with having my trade in play. But for the most part, you have to be aware of major news events right before the time you're taking a trade and the potential effect that could have on your trade in terms of increased spreads, slippage, and pummeling through your stop loss and giving you a higher than one hour loss because of the potential slippage that could occur, okay? It's about just being using your common sense and being aware of when major news events is around. Impulsive moves, this is uh, probably one of the biggest ones. And it's, everyone knows that I'm not into rule-based trading and what is an impulsive move is subjective in a way. Okay, it's, it's, it becomes down to experience judging what an impulsive move is. But if you were to, if I was to cate categorize it, I would say it's extreme price movements from a distance, that's important, it's from a distance, not close to the FTB, we expect that strong momentum move into the FTB area because we as discussed in the previous video because we know that's the order flow order flow type move we expect okay that strong momentum is generated through the order flow that we know is occurring as price approaches the FTB area okay so we're talking about strong price movements from a distance okay and price movements that are not common in the normal course of a trading day on that pair in question so each pair is very different dollar CAD is very different to gold for example which is different to Aussie yen you have to look at that pair and judge you know it is a takes a form of judgment to be able to judge whether that move is impulsive or not and if, if I'm in doubt I would just risk less it's not often that I, would, I won't take a trade due to an impulsive move unless it's very obvious okay and that comes down to experience in a way okay price basing just before the FTB area this also destroys the value because you've got if you've got a base that price breaks out of then obviously price has to travel back into it okay so if it's a, sh a long setup price is breaking above a below a, a base just above it's breaking out of demand therefore it's going to turn supply on the potential supply on the retrace okay so that decreases the value of trading in any case but the other aspect of it is you're having a breakout just above you're having a breakout of a base just above your FTB area that breakout obviously has order flow associated with it we know the order flow that exists as a breakout in terms of the breakout rush so that is stronger order flow than maybe you want going into your FTB area I'll go over an example in a bit washed out SR zones this is just really it doesn't happen that often but you get an SR which flips price in, in both directions I axis as support resistance in quick succession it will get to a point where actually it just loses its ability to, to do that to cause price to react okay and, it, and that's what I call washed out if I see over the, you know if I'm looking at M30 for example and over the course of a two-day period I'm seeing price is oscillating around that SR multiple times you know six seven times that's in support and resistance I'm going to look for evidence that that SR is actually losing its ability to cause price to react because it will at some point okay price missing entry this is kind of one of the most frustrating things with an FTB setup sometimes is if you know you miss your entry by one, two pips, do you can cancel the trade? Do you then reduce your risk on the trade or do you just leave it? Okay. Again, sometimes it will come back and it will work out. 
sometimes it won't. What I'm looking for is, what I kind of ask myself is, has price taken or likely taken part of the orders I wanted to be a part of in that reaction? If it has, then I'm at least going to reduce my exposure and potentially just not take the trade, okay? So I, that's where identifying the decision points helps because you can zoom in, you can find those decision points and you can find where price reacted to and why, okay? So if it reacted to a higher decision point which isn't part of your zone, then you can conclude that it hasn't been it hasn't taken some of the orders that you want to be orders you want to be a part of and therefore leave your entry in. If it has, or there's a bit of uncertainty, then obviously the setup is not as good as it was before that price coming close, therefore it's worth reducing your risk. Always think about things in terms of risk probabilities. Is the setup the same as it was before that price coming close scenario occurred? If it is materially the same, leave your order in place. If it isn't, look to reduce it, okay? Or cut it. So if I go over some examples, impulsive move. This is your, uh, this is dollar Swiss franc. This is a, an M15 time frame. You can see from a distance, okay? We expect the rush when price gets close, especially if there's an area to break out of, which there isn't, but we don't expect the move like this, okay? This is a news-based move, but this isn't a news-based move, but it is an impulsive move. And you can see move from a distance. That's all we're looking for, move from a distance, Got to be aware. Got to be wary of that. Okay, that's how I look at it. And also understanding what is going on at the time, what is causing that move, helps you to decide whether it's a move that's likely to continue or not. Okay, and then again, you know, that's if it's unexpected news, things like that. But that comes with experience and practice. Okay, for the most part, you want to keep it simple to start, especially to start with. Focus on identifying setups and trading them. Identify those entries, those stops, those FLI for less and build up a library, a portfolio of setups, okay? This one, again, not as it's certainly not as impulsive as the last one. Actually, that first example was gold. This one's dollar Swiss franc. But impulsive move, which is out of character for this pair. We had the breakout here, which is like that, but all other price movements in the vicinity. This is strong trending action, okay? and price just steam through it, then retests it as the immediate retest before moving higher again. It certainly does come down to some judgment, but that's comes from, you get that from experience of forward testing, or like going through and actually trading setups and experiencing it, because you always can remember where you had a loss where price steamed through it in seconds. Okay, and also to a larger extent from back testing, building up a portfolio, a library of setups if you go over a year's worth of H1 setups on multiple pairs, you will spot things, okay? You will spot all of these things. You don't need me to explain because you'll spot them yourself, okay? And that's where confidence comes into it. This one's an example of price basing. This is what I mean. Okay, so we have the base. So when price breaks out of here, we know we've got the breakout order flow, the breakout rush. Stop loss is getting triggered, breakout trade is going short. So we know we have an enhanced order flow that we wouldn't normally expect down here. And that could be, that enhanced order flow could be too strong for the demand sitting within the FTB. And it also could change, you know, supply and demand is not static, it's dynamic, i.e. ever changing, as sentiment changes, etc. So a breakout of this area could be a, a, a sentiment change in terms of a, a trend continuation because he's got this kind of look to it, hasn't it? But you've got to be wary. Obviously, the value, you know, if you're looking for a value in terms of taking an FTB here, you're not going to be looking back up to here. You're going to be looking, you know, much higher because there's no value <laughs> from here to here. But you've got to be wary that this generates breakout type order flow, which is strong order flow. Therefore, you've got stronger than order flow to reverse than you would normally have. Okay, and that's what the problem is with price basing as well as the um, reduction in value. Another example, again, a, a, a classic breakout picture here. The wedge pattern, you can see the wedge along here. Price breaks up here, we expect it to break out with strong momentum because of the, the build up of order flow orders below here, the stops breakout trade is going short so we know price arriving into our FTB area which is this area along here is going to be arriving with stronger 
selling momentum than it would normally have for a normal FTB because of the breakout just above. Okay, and that momentum could be too strong to get to be reversed. Okay. This is an example of a washed out SR. You can see resistance, support, 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 resistance doesn't respect price along here, not on this time frame anyway, resistance, support, support, all in very quick time, basically just got that, um, that sideways moving action and it's oscillating around here. So it will come to a point where it will lose its ability to cause price to react and you can see within this zone here as I've already drawn, you can see now I would not be looking for an FTB now on on this on this SR because look at how it's causing price to react. It's not clear, it's not concise like the bounces around here. It's now losing its ability to cause price to react because price isn't respecting it. It's kind of just moving. You know, it's just doing this basically, but it's not respecting it like it. You know, it's not going like that. Okay. Price coming close and moving away. There's price coming close. This is our FTB. So you have to look at this, zoom in, find your decision points, which you would have already done because you know where you're basing your entry and your stop loss. Can you conclude that price has hit the entry, the orders you wanted to be a part of? Okay, has this reaction here? taking orders that you want to be part of. I look at the decision point where you expect price to react at. Okay, if it's down here, then price hasn't hit that area. It's come very close, but it hasn't hit the demand that you wanted to be a part of. Okay, if there is any doubt, then just reduce your risk. Okay. And that is a final example. As I said before, although it's important eventually to consider these sort of things I mentioned, to start out with, it's more important to focus on identifying many setups, okay, in terms of identifying suitable setups, suitable setups for FTB trades, and finding the entries, practice finding those decision points, the entries and stop losses, and identifying exits, and actually trading them and making money. That is more important than focusing on um, impulsive moves, basing, price coming close. You'll pick those things up through time. You'll pick them through. You'll pick them up when you go back over charts, which any diligent trader will do. They'll go over and they'll build up portfolios of 500 charts. And they, that the only way you get confidence is by back testing and forward testing. You don't get confidence by just understanding theory and then going out and trading it. You're not ever. No one ever gets confident, fully confident by doing that. You only get confident by doing your due diligence, professional due diligence, going back, picking a multitude of different pairs, different time frames, picking a time frame like a year, if it's H1, pick a year, go back and identify suitable setups that you think are suitable and practice finding those decision points, finding the entries, finding the exits and look how price reacted. That's what gives you confidence to be able to trade, go, trade forward. Most people won't do that because they're too lazy. They haven't got, they won't do what it takes, okay? But that's what you need to do to be able to become a good trader. So lastly, I'm just going to go over a few common mistakes and just a couple of other points. Um, you know, this is from my experience of teaching people and just seeing multiple people, many people trade FTBs, okay? And just price action generally, what do most people do? They micromanage, okay? As soon as they're in a trade, if they're on a H1 trade, they're in a, they'll start zooming down to M5. Ridiculous. You trade on or around the time frame you're trading on, the setup is based on, okay? You don't take a H1 trade and zoom into M1 and watch it. I don't do that. It's a waste of my time doing that. I've got a H1 trade. I got my exit. I got my exit planned. It's going to take something good, something you know, very clear, to me to want to cut that trade before it hits my stop loss or hits my target. Okay. You don't need to be watching trades in and out when you're in an FTB trade. Okay. Watching around the time frames the setup is based on for price action to maybe color trade is is viable. But you have to know what to watch because the chances are your emotions will take over 
the logical side of your brain because you don't really know what to be looking for and price stalling on or just not doing what you expected to do what's mo you're most likely to have to talk yourself into that price action telling you it's not likely to work out and cut your trade I see so many people cutting trades early for wrong reasons and the trade working out okay I've seen it over and over again and that's because they micromanage because they don't have the confidence to watch and let a trade play out and if it doesn't go if it doesn't go parabolic straight away they can make, they get itchy finger and they start cutting looking to cut a trade especially if it's seen some profit and they're like oh it's you know it's it's, it's 0.8 it's one hour in profit or uh, you know they'll start to cut look to cut it because they've taught themselves they taught themselves into a position where they convince themselves that actually we've got good price action here that indicates it's not like to hit my FLR FLS I'm going to cut the trade 99% of the time that's not the case for people I've seen because they don't have the confidence they don't have the experience and confidence okay so I've covered all those three points micromanaging looking too much into the other considerations you know, I say oh is that an impulsive move and or price hasn't got rejected instantly and, and things like that you know I've seen it over and over again people coming up with these things and say oh, I'm going to cut it here you know I'm going to just bank my profit and let it and then it works out you know FTB trades are more set and forget trades yes you can watch it yes there are times where price action will dictate will tell you something that you can exit your trade early and not take a full loss or get out before it reverses on you but they are few and far between relative to a set and forget approach okay and how do I know that because I've got a portfolio of set and forget approach if you do if you do interfere your trades you should keep a you should either trade them separately in terms of trade a set and forget even if it's on a demo or at least log the results so you can see how you interfering with the trade has affected the overall result relative to it just set and forget and I guarantee a hell of a lot of people are performing worse by interfering with the trade because they think they have the price action skills to be able to exit a trade early but and which which will cause a better result than set and forget and most people don't to be quite frank very few do I know a handful of people that have that sort of skill for FDB type trades okay and that's why for example I've been keeping a record of my trading room setups I upload screenshots of setups that are on my watch list FDB setups and then I take after shots after the trade set and forget approach I upload into my form and it's a log so I've been doing it for 15 weeks up to the end of the first week of December of 135 trades averaging nine trades per week a 77.8% hit rate okay and the average R I this is not a scientific statement here in terms of the average R but it I know from the way I trade FTBs and the way I identify my FLR FLS I get about 1.1 to 1.2 R as my average winner okay so you can see with a with 135 trades and 105 winners an average winner of 1.1, 1.2 R, an average loser of 1 R. You can see the type of expectancy that produces. Okay, and if you've got a hit rate of 70, 80 percent, then common sense tells you that it's better focusing on the winning trades and how you can extrapolate more at the winning trades than cutting the losing trades because only 20, 30 percent of your trades are losing trades. All right, it's better to focus on the higher percentage, right, the winning trades, because that's if you can increase your average R, you're going to have a more a higher effect on your net profit than you are reducing your average losing R. But most folk tend to focus on reducing the average losing R by interfering and actually having losses that wouldn't have occurred, or cutting trades or not taking trades that would have been winners. And the opposite end, they cut their winners too soon because they don't have the confidence to sit and watch trades and see them play out. Okay, and they convince themselves that price is telling them this and it's a logical reason to cut a trade most of the time it's just pure rubbish it's just pure emotional uh, it's just your pure emotions and lack of confidence taking over but you have to have that in your mind the underlying stats on set and forget are very good for FTB trades most of my trades are set and forget I don't really interfere because I don't need to I prefer looking at other types of trades for you know what I call pure price action trades for um, you know ones where I do need to watch because I'm watching bar by bar but FTBs for me set and forget really I watch them to to a, a small extent but 
for the most part, I class them as set and forget. I could trade them set and forget and make money with them. Make a very good, have a very good expectancy with them. Okay. But if you want to get good at any kind of any of the trading strategies I've outlined, the F, FTBs, the FBs, and the daily retests, when I go over those, the starting point is going over your charts. Pick a number of pairs, the pairs you're going to trade. Pick a time frame you're going to trade, and find setups. Find suitable setups. Record them. Note them. Note how price moves away from them, moves into them. Does it affect the outcome? Okay, find those decision points, find the entry stop losses. Okay, that's what you should do to get confidence, be able to forward trade. Well, that's it. That concludes the um, the FTB series. Um, like the FB series, I'm going to do a webinar to discuss, go over Q and A, go over recent examples at the time of the webinar, and discuss a few other points as well.